Would that the dying embers of this tiny fire could warm more than body alone. For I am frozen to the mirror with anxiety of the tardiness of my beloved father. It was on a night such as this in early April that dear Papa ventured out boldly into the frozen waste in search of a friendly mining camp whence he could obtain his annual pack of cigarettes and newspaper. To think, at this very instant, he may be struggling somewhere, alone, helpless, lost in the clutches of this relentless blizzard. Oh, listen how the wind wails! Whoa. Alas, since his departure, my tender heart weeps with loneliness, and the dim hope of companionship seems but hapless self deception. Indeed, not one single solitary soul has entered into my miserable existence. Except Bruno. Truly, were it not for Bruno's daily visits, my solitude would surely lead to madness. His reassuring voice beckons me along roads of hope and happiness. Hark! Even now he calls. Dearest friend, <laughs> the hours between your visits are unbearable. Is there anything I can do for you today? Always oh, is weak with hunger. Would you like to share my meager fare of flapjacks again? <laughs> Alas, these mere dozen are the last I can procure, as now the, the stocks are the food. Nevertheless, as always, we shall share. Oh, I can sing with joy. Don't trip yet, dearest. This meager ration is gone. Only Providence can tell from whence will come our next meal. While I was going through my tattered trousers in the mining camp, I found that our paltry savings had dwindled to nothingness. Oh, wait. What are we then to do? If only your dear mother were here to help. Oh, Father, right not burden yourself with the terrible memory of her disappearance. No. The nightmare of it will not return her for, to me. So for your sake, Nell, I shall not be reminded of it. I shall not be reminded of that cursed day 15 years ago when she and your older sister Gwendolyn disappeared mysteriously while ice fishing on the frozen poppycock pond. Gwendolyn was but a toddling cat at the time. I know, Father, I know. Let us be haunted by the dim tragedy no longer. Did perhaps to you, Nelly dear, but a heartbreaking calamity for me to this day. Oh, hopelessness. Father, please. Read me from the paper, Father, as you did when I was small. Perhaps I can replace his bitter memory with a pleasant one. Oh, the wonderful stories you would entice me with till I drifted sweetly off to sleep on this very spot with visions of romantic mounties and fair maidens dancing in my head. Please, Father, read again to me. Very well, Nellie Pye. Yeah, let's see what we have here. <clears throat> Stumpy Goober lost five teeth last week in a drunken brawl over the favors of a soiled dove and gnome. When questioned, Stumpy explained... What did Mr. Stumpy say, Father? Uh, never mind. <clears throat> no place like gnome, but I shall remain ever on guard, lest he win his wiles on her innocence. Besides, he's better than Bruno by a long shot. Have I died and gone to heaven? Possibly the angel of mercy I have dreamed of so sweetly since childhood? Surely no mere mortal could be blessed with such a Could this mean he likes me <laughs> Ray, do not tax your strength, for your lips have taken a terrible tapping. Her voice laughs with the music of a clear, trip trickling scream. String. My, my last memory is abandoning the relentless storm. How in the name of heaven did I arrive in such a desirable position? Though I remain uncertain what to do about you, I am sure you are safe from your captors for the time being. On a terrible night such as this, there cannot possibly be one single solitary soul within miles of this place. The flapjacks will be ready soon. Who could that be? I hope it's not Bruno. Excuse me, is this the outhouse? It is. Oh, relief. <laughs> Can we enter this warm and desirable refuge, kind sir? Certainly, and we welcome you with open arms. There are no strangers here, only friends we have not met. Come on in if you're coming. 
gets any colder in here, they'll find us all in the spring on the floor with our tongues hanging out. Did you say we? Indeed, for my traveling companion patiently maintains his silent vigil just outside. Hurry up, you glittering idiot! My mustache is breaking off at the tips out here. Faster, you son of a thousand mothers, must, must. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome, my good lads. You are defrosting yourselves in the humble abode of I, worn out. A poor but honest freelance lumberjack and loyal son of a big southern confederacy. Confederacy, sir? Then we are comrades in arms. Long live Dixie. Why, why long live Dixie? I needn't tell the ignorant rebel I came to Canada by dodging the draft. And this is my lovely but spinster daughter, Nellie Out. Nellie, get... Uh, get acquainted with our honored guest. Truly, the rose that proverbially grows in the wilderness. Comment allez-vous? Oh, you are too kind. I know. A fetching filling indeed. I may find her useful to me at a later date. That pathetical fruit left town only minutes before the news broke like wildfire. Mm, obviously, he's unaware that come spring this, that great iron horse will run directly through this cottage. Why, the property value will rise to high heaven. Think of it. While he frets over his piddling lumber mill out back, the very grand ground we stand on becomes rich. Rich beyond his wildest dreams, and ready to be taken by the first high-class filcher swindle in his eyes. Goodness shall triumph here, you cad. Worn out has owned this land for twenty years. Any mere technicality I shall easily overcome. Um, methinks it's time for the old, uh, my landy predates your landy by one day routine. How I long to tell her my true feelings. How would I feel if I were Bruno and some cat jumped in on me? Now, I'm deeply sorry, but I cannot advance Advance brazen overtures to you knowing full well the third party is concerned. Oh, but, but... Of course, in my young and innocent excitement, I never dreamed he'd probably has a girl his very own. With his handsome face, doesn't turn out. What a fool I have been. Oh, lonely night, again. For her sake... For... <laughs> for for her sake, sake, I, I must, must tear, tear myself away. Then the eldest daughter said, What do you think I am, a toaster? So the Eskimo pulled out. Is there a reason left for living without her? Wait! The reward hanging over my head. There is no mistake they can use it badly here. It makes no sense. It makes no difference to me any longer. Now? Yes, Roger? Take heart in my solemn promise that I will see to it that you will not want for money for further provisions this winter. I don't understand. That you will accept my sacrifice in the spirit in which it was made. With nothing but goodwill and the best wishes for you and your father and... Bruno! Bruno? But he is just a casual acquaintance. Surely not to the degree of your feminine admirers. What? But I thought you and him. It's nothing. I was sure it was you. Oh, Francis, stay! Surely this is too good to be true. No, there can be no weird girl on this world for me. What do you hear to me? Oh, Roger. Oh, no. So the Eskimo said, if that's the case, come blow your horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no!